Hello, my kings and queens, my prince and my princesses. Today we are going to read a wonderful story. This is one of my favorites. This story is called Flossie and the Fox by Patricia C. McKissick. Oh, this story is so cute. It was one of my favorites in elementary school, and I want to share this story with you. You know we have to affirm, everybody, that we are what? We are the greatest. So let's go. Can I get one witness? You got a witness. You got me. You are the greatest. You are the greatest, greatest thing that's ever happened to me. Affirm yourself today that you are the greatest. We're the Popcorn Kid crew. We are the greatest. All right, let's move right. This story is, I needed this today, and I hope it will help you out today. I sincerely think you will believe this story. All right, let's go. This story is so cute. Here we go, everybody. Here we go. I want you to think about the main character. Her name is Flossie, and she is so cute. Flossie, the sound of Big Mama's voice fluttered past the cabins in Sophie's quarters, round the smokehouse, beyond the chicken coop, all the way down to Flossie Finley. Flossie tucked away her straw doll in a hollow log, then hurried to answer her grandmother's call. Did you all have a big mama? Big mamas are known to be in the South. It's another way of saying, it's a very intimate way of saying grandmama. Here I am, Big Mama, Flossie called. After catching her breath, whew, it was hotter than usual in Tennessee than an August day. Big Mama, let me move this, down. can you see? I'm sorry if you can't. Big Mama stopped sorting peaches and wiped her hands and face with her apron. Take these to Miss Viola at the McCutcheon place, she said, reaching behind her and handing Flossie a basket of fresh eggs. Seems like they've been troubled by a fox. Miss Viola's chicken be so scared, they can't even now lay a stone. Big Mama clicked her teeth and shook her head. Why come Mr. J can't catch the fox with his dogs, Flossie asked, putting a peach in her apron pocket to eat later. Every time they corner that old slickster, he gets away. I tell you, that fox is one sly critter. That fox is one sly critter, or he thinks he is. Wait till he meets Flossie. Just wait and see what happens. Do a fox look? Flossie asked. I just remember ever seeing one. Big Mama had to think a bit. Child, a fox just be a fox. But one thing's for sure that rascal loves eating some eggs. He'll do most anything to get him some eggs. Flossie tucked the basket under her arm and started on her way. Don't tarry now, Big Mama called, and be particular about them eggs. Yes, um, Flossie answered, 
The way through the woods was shorter and cooler than the route than the road under the open sun. What if I come upon a fox? Thought Flossie. Oh well, a fox just be a fox. That ain't so scary. Flossie commenced to skip along. When she come upon a critter, she couldn't recollect ever seeing. He was sitting at the side of the road like he's expecting somebody. Flossie skipped right up to him and nodded a greeting the way she'd been taught to do. Top of the morning to you, little missy, the critter replied. And what is your name? I reckon I don't know who you be either. Slowly the animal circled round Flossie. I am a fox, he answered. All the time I'm that basket of eggs. Hmm. He stopped right in front of Flossie and smiled as best as he could and bowed at your service. Really? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me show you the picture. Flossie rocked back and forth on her heels, then back and forth and back and forth, carefully studying the creature who claimed to be a fox. Nope, she said at last. I just purely don't believe it. You don't believe what? Asked the fox, looking away from the basket of eggs. For the first time, he's looking away from the eggs. You don't believe what? I don't believe you a fox, that's what. Fox's eyes flashed with anger and then he chuckled softly. <coughs> My dear child, he said, sounding right disgusted. Of course I am a fox. A little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Whatever do they teach these children nowadays? Flossie tossed her head up in the air. Hmm. Well, whatever you are, you sure think a heap of yourself, she said, and skipped away. Fox looked shocked. Wait, he called. You mean you're not frightened, not just a bit? Flossie stopped. Then she turned and said, I ain't never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you? I don't even know now that you're a real fox, for fact. Fox pulled himself up tall and cleared his throat. <clears throat> are you saying I must offer proof that I am a fox before you are willing to be frightened of me? That's just what I'm saying. Little Flossie skipped on through the piney woods while Fox and the fellow rushed away, looking for whatever he needed to prove he was really who he said he was. Meanwhile, Flossie stepped to rest beside a tree. Suddenly, Fox was beside her. I have proof, he said. See, I have a thick, luxurious, I have, sorry, I have thick, luxurious fur. Fill it for yourself. Fox leaned over for Flossie to rub his back. Hmm. This feels like rabbit fur to me. She said to the fox, shucks. You ain't no fox, you a rabbit. All the time trying to fool me. 
me a rabbit? He shouted. I have you know my reputation proceeds me. I am the third generation of foxes who have outsmarted and outrun Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's fine hunting dogs. I have raided some of the best hen houses from Franklin to Madison. Rabbit indeed. I am a fox and you will act accordingly. Flossie hopped to her feet and put her free hand on her hip and patted her foot. Unless you can show you a fox, I will not accord you nothing. And without further ceremony, she skipped away. Ooh, Flossie. That fox ain't getting to her, is it? No. Down the road a piece, Flossie stopped by a bubbly spring. She knelt to get a drink of water, and Fox came up to her and said, I have a long pointed nose. Now that should be enough proof. Don't prove a thing to me, Flossie picked up some wildflowers. Come to think of it. She said, as a matter of fact, like, Rats got pointed noses. She snapped her finger. That's it. You a rat trying to pass yourself off as a fox. That near bout got the fox's breath away. I beg your pardon, he gasped. You can beg all you want, Foxy, Flopsy said, skipping on down the road. That still don't make you no fox. I'll teach you a thing or two, young lady, Fox called after her. I'm going to teach you some. You just wait and see, the fox said. Oh, boy. All for some eggs. That fox. Before long, Flossie came to a clearing. A large orange tabby was sun sunning on a tree stump. Hey, pretty kitty, the girl say, and rubbed the cat behind her ears. Meanwhile, Fox slipped from behind a clump of bushes. Since you won't believe me when I tell you I'm a fox, he said stiffly, perhaps you will believe that that fine feline creature towards whom you seem to have some measure of respect. Flossie looked at the cat and winked her eye. He show you a heap of words, she said, as she whispered to the cat. See him hiding? Hiding in the bushes. Fox beckoned for Cat to speak up. Cat jumped to a nearby log and yawned and stretched, and then she answered, This is a fox because he has sharp claws and yellow eyes, she purred. Fox seemed satisfied, but Flossie looked at the cat. Hmm. And then she looked at the fox. And then once more, she looked at both of them just for sure. And she said, all due respect, Miss Cat, but both y'all got sharp claws and yellow eyes. So that don't prove nothing. Except both of y'all be cats. Fox went to howling and running around in circles. He was plumb beside himself. I'm a fox. I'm a fox and I know it, he shouted. This is absurd. No call for you to use that kind of language, Flossie said. And she skipped away. Fox followed 
old pleading, I just remembered something. It may be a solution to this horrible situation. Well, good, it's about time, Flossie said. I, I have a bushy tail, Fox seemed to perk up. That's right, he said. All foxes are known for their fluffy, bushy tails. That's got to be adequate proof. Ain't got to be. You got a bushy tail, but so do squirrels. Flossie pointed to one overhead leaping from branch to branch in the treetops. Here, have a bite of my peach, she said, offering Fox first bite of her treat. She offered the fox a piece of her treat. She's so sweet. But by now, Fox was crying like a natural born baby. No, 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 he sobbed. If I promise you I'm a fox, won't that do? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Flossie shook her head. Nope. Nope. Oh, woe is me, Fox hollered. I may never recover my confidence. Flossie, don't stop walking. That's just what I've been saying. You just an old confidencer. Come telling me you was a fox. Then you can't even prove it. Shame on you. Long about that time, Flossie and the fox came out of the woods and Flossie cupped her hands over her eyes and caught sight of the McCutcheon's quarters and Miss Viola's cabin. Here she comes. Here she comes. Fox didn't even notice a thing. He just followed behind Flossie, begging to be believed. Give me one last chance, he pleaded. Flossie turned her heels. Okay, but just this once. Just this once. Just one more time. I'm sorry if there's a glare. When I get better with this, I'm going to improve my skills with editing and this channel. Please be patient with me because I'm still learning. I'm still learning this thing, you all. Please be patient with me. I'd appreciate it so much. I'm going to get better. Fox tried not to whimper, but his voice was real unsteady like. I, I have sharp teeth and I can run exceedingly fast. He waited for Flossie to say something. Slowly, the girl rocked from heel to toe and back and forward. You know, she finally said, smiling, it don't make much difference what I think anymore. I wonder why. Why is she saying that? It don't make any difference now. What's getting ready to happen? You see this shadow right here? Can I happen? Well, it doesn't matter what I think anymore. What? Fox asked. Well, why? Because there's one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's hounds behind you. He's got sharp teeth and can run fast, too. And by the way, that hound's looking. It's all over for you. Ooh, oh well. With a quick glance back, Fox dashed towards the woods. The hound knows who I am, he shouted, but I'm not worried. I sure can outsmart and outrun any of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's miserable mutts any old time of the day because like I told you, I am a fox. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. He is a fox. Okay, fox. I 
know, said Flossie, I know. She said, and turned towards Miss Viola's with the basket of the eggs safely tucked under her arm. Look at her. Look at that little face. The end. The end. Oh, I have a little note in here. I hope you enjoyed this story. It's one of my favorite stories. But I wanted to share this message I got today. It says, your greater days are before you, not behind you. When you speak faith, chains will be broken. Now this week, let's try to exercise faith. And let's just know that everything behind us is behind us and greater days are ahead of us. I love you, popcorn kit. Give everybody a hug. Give everybody a kiss. And I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Peace.